I am, trust me, I'm a politician. Uh, there's a sentence guaranteed to generate derision. However, the reality is that the basic foundation of any political system is trust. Trust that decisions are made through the right processes and for the right reasons. Over 5,000 pages, the Mahan and Moriarty reports catalogue a betrayal of trust at all levels. They detail how a dozen councillors took corrupt payments to buy their support for planning proposals. They condemn the failure of a former Taoiseach to, account, to give a truthful account of the source of over £200,000. And they expose the corrupt awarding of one of the most lucrative contracts in the history of this state, the second mobile phone licence. The reports represent a damning indictment of the individuals concerned, many of whom were members of Fianna Fáil. Through corrupt activity or inadequate ethical standards, key members and leaders of my party brought shame on Fianna Fáil and brought shame on their profession. They abused the trust that was placed in them by their voters, their colleagues and their country and debased the very notion of public service. The 22nd of March 2012, the day on which the Mahan Tribunal's report was finally published, was a seminal date for Fianna Fáil. As it approached, commentators wondered whether our response to the report would be half-hearted or whether we would take real action in response to any adverse findings. For me, failure to act would have rendered the party totally unworthy of public confidence and support and put paid to our efforts to truly renew ourselves. Thankfully, the response was both swift and comprehensive. Within hours of publication, our officer board had met and had agreed to propose the expulsion of Bertie Ahern, Porrick Flynn and others. In recommending the expulsion of Ahern, Michal Martin recognised his achievements, particularly in relation to the peace process, but also made it clear that these did not in any way absolve him from facing the consequences of Judge Mahan's findings. In my experience, it's Fianna Fáil's own members and supporters that are most hurt by the revelations in the Mahan and other reports. The vast majority of our members will never get a cent out of their involvement in the party, nor would they ever look for one. They're decent, honourable people who have freely volunteered their time over the years because they saw our party as a way to actually help to improve their communities and our country. That some, and they've uh, supported people and campaigned for them in tough elections, in bad weather, because they genuinely believed that those people would make them proud. That some of those individuals have turned out to be truly unworthy of such support is a source of great anger for our members. And out of that anger comes a determination to make sure that it can't happen again. Several important steps have already been taken. The party's fundraising model has been reformed in recent years to focus on collecting small donations from a large number of people rather than large sums from an elite few. In fact, more than 90% of our national fundraising is now accounted for by donations of less than 100 euro. And at our last Ardesh, which was just before uh, the Mahan report, our party agreed a series of new rules uh, which oppose specific ethical duties on all of our members and public representatives. These include a new provision requiring all candidates to give the party a declaration of interest before they even get on a ticket uh, along the lines that they would have to provide to the Standards and Public Offices Commission if they're elected. It's also important to acknowledge, as Judge Mahan does, that legislation regulating politics and politicians has been transformed since the events investigated by the Tribunal. There's no longer any doubt between personal and political finances. Politicians are required to lodge donations to a separate account and to give the Standards and Public Offices Commission a copy of the bank statement for that account every year. They also have to make an annual declaration of inter interest, which is then made publicly available. Fianna Fáil has pushed for further reform and has published bills to end corporate donations to political parties and to regulate lobbying. We are determined to restore confidence not just in our own party, but in the body politic. And while the legislation that we published last year on, on corporate donations uh, wasn't accepted immediately by the government, they have brought forward their own political funding bill, which passed the Shannon last week, um, and which, while I, I would agree with Michael, could go forward in some respects, I think it does actually mark uh, a major improvement on the regime that we have at present. And I also welcome the government's commitment to legislating to protect for whistleblowers and to regulate political lobbying. However, 
as a new member of the Oireachtas, I'm genuinely concerned that despite all of the legislative improvements that have been made and are in train, there is still far too much moral ambiguity around ethics in Irish public life. And we certainly have not seen the kind of consistent condemnation of low standards that I believe is needed to restore trust, not just in my own party, but in politicians as a whole. If things are really to change, politicians of all parties and known must be willing to apply the same standards to comparable practices, regardless of who is involved. Accountability can't just be for other people. Condemnation can't only be of your political opponents. We must all be willing to expose and condemn all wrongdoing without fear or favour. Unfortunately, and it saddens me to say this, the contrast between the responses to the Mahan and Moriarty reports shows that this has not been the case over the last 18 months. Fianna Fáil's response to Mahan's report stands in stark contrast to Fine Gael and Labour's reaction to Judge Moriarty's findings. To this day, the Taoiseach still refuses to say if he accepts the findings of the Moriarty Tribunal. In his Dáil speech on the report, he never once mentioned Dennis O'Brien and his government has halted the independent planning inquiries commenced by Minister John Gormley into Fine Gael-led councils. In the debate on the Moriarty report, ministers from both government parties cherry-picked parts of it for comment and deliberately sought to minimise its significance. Despite its damning findings about Fine Gael's targeted fundraising around the second mobile phone licence, the government tried to portray the report as being merely concerned with the actions of one rogue minister. And in the Dáil debates on the report, only one government TD, my colleague in, in Dublin North East, or Dublin Bay North, as we, as we prefer now, uh, Tommy Brown, was the only person to actually be honest and, and accept the consequence of the report and call it as it was. The last 18 months have sadly also been noteworthy for other ethical breaches. We've had one TD claiming to have used €50,000 worth of toner cartridges in two years. Another deputy has openly admitted to defrauding the revenue commissioners of more than 2.1 million euro while deciding to double his own wages at the same time. And an entire group of TDs has been actively campaigning for people not to pay their taxes. And whether you agree with the household charge or not, and I appreciate that people have strong views on one side or the other, for me I think it's absolutely unacceptable for TDs to advocate breaking laws that are democratically adopted by the parliament of which they are members. At the most basic level, it shows an absolute lack of respect for democracy. <laughs> the net effect of all of these actions is a further erosion of public faith in politics and politicians and a demonstration of the complete lack of effective procedures for dealing with ethical breaches in this country. Personally, I think it is absurd that being declared bankrupt de disqualifies you from continuing to hold your seat, but major expense fiddling and fra tax fraud do not. I also think it is beyond time we put in place an effective independent system for investigating and punishing major ethical breaches. The notion that an internal committee of the Rochtus I am or the Members' Interest Committee or our Committee on Pre Procedures and Privilege is capable of carrying out proper inquiries into, members, into TDs and Senators is an absolute joke in my view. We wouldn't accept it in any other profession. We, don't, we increasingly don't accept it in medicine. I am, we're moving against self-regulation, the legal profession and elsewhere, and I think it's about time the politicians stop uh, legislating against self-regulation for others I am, and actually did it for ourselves as well. I would like to propose one way in which I think that this could be done. Candidates for public office could be required to sign a legally binding pledge outlining specific ethical standards that they would be obliged to adhere to if elected. An independent electoral commission could then be given the power to investigate alleged breaches of this pledge and impose a range of sanctions up to and including disqualification from office. The days of TD senators and other public representatives being able to lawyer up in order to, to dodge legitimate questions have to be ended. That must apply whether they are scruffy looking new deputies or sitting Tishi. <laughs> if, if this means that public representatives have less rights than the public they represent, then so be it, if that's what it takes to restore public trust. 
I have no doubt that such a system would require constitutional change, along with uh, detailed thought and clear safeguards. But it would certainly, in my view, be a much more meaningful topic for the Constitutional Convention to consider than the lens of the President's term. In fact, I can only think of one person in this country who genuinely cares about how long the presidential term is. <laughs> Maybe his wife. <laughs> if, if we are to really improve ethical standards in Irish politics, we need effective methods of both prevention and enforcement. We also need a culture in which people feel empowered and compelled to shout stop. New rules can only achieve so much. People's mindsets have to change too. The programme for this session asks how the events in the Mahan and Moriarty tribunals were allowed to happen. In Judge Mahan's own view, it continued because nobody was prepared to do enough to stop it. He says this is inevitable when corruption ceases to become an isolated event and becomes so entrenched that it is transformed into an acknowledged way of doing business. He points out that far from being connected with a few isolated individuals or one political party, corruption in the 1980s and 90s was both systemic and endemic. He also believes that a general apathy amongst the public towards corruption meant insufficient pressure on politicians. As Elaine has pointed out, the corruption and abuse of power outlined in the Mahan and Moriarty reports did not take place in a vacuum. Unfortunately, politics was not the only realm of Irish life infected by low standards. So we can't look at political corruption in isolation. It must be seen in the context of a state and a society that was plagued for decades by dishonesty and by deceit in many sectors, the church, the banks, and even some parts of Angarda Síochána. There is no doubt that values such as misplaced loyalty and excessive respect for authority enabled low standards to thrive in high places for far too long. In recent years, the cold light of day, day has been cast on many of the dark shadows of our past. As a country, I hope that we have all become more vigilant as a result. Rules can only change so much. As Senator Martin McAlee stated during the Shannon debate on the Mahan Report, one of the greatest safeguards for the future would be the development of a culture of integrity where there is no public tolerance of corruption or circumvention of the law. Creating a culture of this, time, of this kind is an ongoing struggle and relies on the personal integrity of each and every one of us in our daily lives. To conclude, the events detailed in the Mahan and Moriarty reports have caused untold damage to the reputation of our political system. Because of this, citizens are now understandably cynical and it is the new generation of politics com politicians coming of age, including myself, who were paying the price of the sins of those who went before us. The most common and dispiriting refrain that I hear from people is you are all the same. We have to challenge this, not just because it's not true, but also because it's corrosive of democracy. While a healthy level of skepticism is far better than unquestioning the deference of the past, tearing all politicians with the one brush, regardless of their individual merits or weaknesses, is dangerous. It's likely to deter the type of good people that we need to enter the profession in order to renew our political system and our republic. And given the scale of the challenges currently facing our country at the present time, Ireland needs honest politicians and transparent politics more than ever before. Thank you.